Everybody was kung fu fighting. Those kids were fast as lightning. In fact, it was a little bit frightening. But they fought with Hi everybody, welcome to the very first uh, YouTube podcast, I guess, for the um, card game Kung Fu Panda Battle of Destiny. My name is Chris, I'm going to go by the name uh, Shifu of the Cards, and I'm going to give some tutorials and some lessons on how to play the game, some benefits of the game, and a glossary of terms. So this, this episode is going to be entitled Introduction and Glossary, Introduction to Myself, Introduction to the Card Game, and some Terms in the Game. So first we're going to start off with my, myself, uh, called the Shifu of the Cards, because I played cards for over 25 years, competitively, won championships, and I have two decks currently with this game on my main account and my secondary account that are champion level, one a Shen and one a Tigress. And so my next video is going to be teaching about those two decks specifically, but I thought for the first video it would be best to kind of introduce everything and also the game to new players. Um, this is a great game. Uh, it has a lot of depth of strategy to it. It's easy to play. It's got a lot of depth, and so I'm going to be covering a little bit. But first, you need to know what is a card game, some terms that you probably hear that if you watch a streamer, and there'll be a stream on this. I'll be setting up a stream for this this week where I'll be going every day and doing live streaming to show the game, but you need to have a basis of knowledge, I think. So in all my videos, I'll be referring back to this one as a way of getting started. So without further ado, um, some major get things you'll hear in a card game are aggro. What aggro means, they, it means they are a very aggressive, fast-paced deck. And they'll used to say aggro is going to go to face, which means they're going to attack their cards and hit your warrior or your master and try to get you down as fast as possible. The second term you're going to hear a lot of would be uh, control. And what a control does is they try to have a lot of heavy, big minions on the board to stop you from attacking and so what I've done today is I, I have I've reached legend like I said with two different accounts and I've not bought cards but today is the first day I went ahead and bought some cards to show you some things about the cards and glossary and talk about them so I think I'll do that now so it's a 40 card opening um, and so we'll, we'll just kind of delve in there that way you have some visual to go with it so here we go here's the first pack See what we get. So farewell. It's the first term of the game we're gonna talk about. Let me highlight it here. If I can. I can't. So technical issues. Uh, farewell means that when this card is in play and then leaves by either. Let's so start from the basic. The top, the top left is gonna be a three, and what that means is you need three chi or three little yellow orbs that'll be at the bottom of the screen to call that card into play. To play it from your hand into the field of play. The blue circle represents the amount of damage that card can do. And the red, red heart is the amount of damage that card can take before it leaves the field of play. Uh, that's very, that red number is very important for um, knowing for, for decks I'm going to build later on. I like my all my decks, my red numbers to be over 3 and higher. We'll get into that a little later. Um, so that is something the heart is where you, you remember the heart equals health so you want to be aware of that and you want to have make sure it's three or more so let's look at the next card and once again farewells when that heart or health breaches zero that is, goes away which triggers this ability in this case it deals one damage to two random enemy warriors random meaning not specific you could have any two so next card uh, so we've got two for one here so that's good it's almost as it planned different ones this is uh, meditate and kick off. We still see the cost of the card in the top left. We still see the attack in blue and the heart in red. Meditate means that this card, when it comes into play, has to wait a turn before you can do anything with it. It's just meditating or, or sleeping. In some games, you'll hear that called to sleeping. Um, and kick off. Kick off means this card also does something when it appears. And what it does is stuns an enemy warrior. Now, stun is very key in this game. What stun will do is when you stun an enemy warrior, it will make that card kind of wavy. And what that means is that card can't attack you and can't defend itself, which is key. Because if you can stun a card, your master and this card can attack it and knock it out, 
without receiving any damage and losing their red total or, or health total. So that's meditate and kick off. Go to the next one. Okay, now this is interesting too. If you notice in the center of the card, you're going to see a, a little, um, uh, you're going to see Mantis. It's kind of going to see, but the green tint of the card also is a giveaway. It's a Mantis specific card. There are right now currently six uh, masters you can play the Furious Five and Shen. Um, Mantis is one of them, and this is a really good card for Mantis. And this one has text with it at the end of your turn if this card is in guard. Something else we haven't talked about. In any in any card you play, it can initially go and attack the person. Or you can pull it over your warrior and put it what's called guard, which means the enemy and or the enemy's warriors have to go through that card to get to your health total. This one has meditate. We talked about earlier. You this one can't guard initially. However, this one, when you bring it into play, you pull it back over your your uh, master, and it will guard. And you see that it's red heart or health has seven, so it makes it pretty hard to get through. And this card can only be used with mantis decks, which is why you see the mantis symbol in the center and the green lining around the outside, the border decoration. Key to note also with all these cards, there's a little gem in the center. This one's white, which means it's a very common, not very rare card. You want to get blues, um, purples, and then hopefully legendaries. Hopefully we'll see some of those as we go. The next one is I got another pig. So apparently we can refresh. Three health, meditate and kick off. We know what that means. Wait to turn, does something on activation. Now this next one, you see that there's a blue outline around it. That means this one's going to be at least a rare card. So let's click on that. And we see Tigress in the center. This is a Tigress specific rare card whenever an adjacent warrior and adjacent means next to so if, if when you this is one of those cards where you want to use a little bit of strategy for more advanced players and put them in between two other cards that are already on the board now whenever adjacent warrior deals strength damage it gains one health so whenever it attacks or gets attacked this minion will gain one health so it's very good and it's a blue card so it's a very good card so go to the next one and we have uh, a 4-3 GOAT immune to range damage. Um, what that means is there will be cards like Shen's Cannon or any kind of abilities that do knockback. This card won't get hit with it. It just jumps over it. You see that really cool illustration. Something I also like to point out, there's just great illustration on these cards. Uh, Ludi did a great job with that. And it's a white card. This one is another. Now this is an interesting card. It's a 2-4 with 3 and it has poison underneath it. Now poison is very interesting. What will happen with poison is when this toxic troublemaker hits a minion it will deal two and at the end of each one of your turns that card will take an additional two in poison damage. So it's really great for this minion in particular to hit a high health minion which is the red number and eventually knock it down. So if you go against a control deck which we'll talk about the control decks here in a minute you will uh, help take away their control and white rarity. And there's a house, which means it's open to anybody. So I'm um, first legendary card. I'm very excited. First legendary card I've opened, and it is Poe's legendary card. You see Poe pan in the middle? It's called Triple Threat. Now this is a really good card. I'm very excited to get this one. Uh, Furious, which means that when this m minion takes damage, or this warrior takes damage, excuse me, something happens. And in this case, it deploys a 2-3 Tenacious Initiate, which is another card two referring to the blue number or attack three referring to the health number so a good card at the end um, every time well, when it gets hit at the start of your turn if you have a tenacious initiate restore triple threat to full goose so it gives it back the ability to keep on spawning additional minions which is very very nice so if you put this one in guard and they can't get through it and that two three initiate stays alive it goes back to having triple threat, which means it can go hit something and spawn another 2 3 initiate. So it's a very, very powerful card. And my first legendary, so I'm kind of excited about that. Um, meditate and Cloak. Meditate, we know from previously, means that it has the way to turn for it to go. Cloak, meaning that it is immune to a direct attack. In other words, it's going to have like a little cool shadow effect over it, and you can't hit it directly. Now, if you have a spell that does damage to the other side of the board or two random enemies, like we talked about earlier, it may hit it. So keep that in mind. And we have meditate and dodge. And dodge is very interesting. 
Dodge means that if you try to attack it, it has a 50-50 chance of avoiding that attack. That's what dodge is. The next pack. Furious, which we talked about earlier. Furious means, and if you look, this is a Viper-specific card. Furious means when it takes damage, this is what happens. Adjacent warriors, which means next two, have plus one strength and leap, which means they can have, do more damage, and they can leap, and I think is a new word, you know, they can jump over an enemy that's in guard. So if there's an enemy that's at 310, it just jumps over and hits the warrior directly in the face, which is very good for uh, aggressive or aggro decks. Got a blue card. Kick off. Poison all warriors with guard. This is a very powerful card. And sometimes in card games you can build what's called theme decks, or, the or, or cards built around text, generally, or, um, or different animals. I've built a bunny-themed Tiger stack that will show in my next video, but uh, this one poison all warriors with guard. So you put this in that you can make a poison deck where you poison constantly poison the enemies. Be very effective in keeping the board clear on the other side and getting board control. So it could be a it could be a nice card for a control decks and a high health pool. So definitely tends towards more of a controlly deck. Next one, the unapologist meditate. Next attack stun. So we meditate means when she comes into play, we won't do anything. But her next attack, if she's still on the board and she has a high health total, so she might be, she will stun, which means she will knock them to where they can't do anything, either attack or defend themselves or guard. So it's a pretty solid card. Treasure Raider, kick off, draw a card from the armory. Now the armory is very interesting in Kung Fu Panda. There is a treasure chest to the left side of the board. And what that does is you're able to, for 2 chi, draw equipment from that or a character-specific card from that armory once per turn. And this lets you get one at random. So, for example, a Shen player, which I am, could get Shen's cannon out of this, which is great. A very great card, which we'll talk about in Shen's video. Another rare. Getting good luck today. Thank you all for watching. Um, this one, Farewell, which means when it health reaches zero, this triggers an effect. It will do two damage to all characters, which means if you're going against a, it can clear the board, but it will also clear yours. You have to be careful when playing this that you play it at the right time. The next one is a looks like a crane-specific card. Uh, unequip all warriors and restore five health to your master. It's a nice little card. Gives you a health. Anytime you gain health, it's a good thing. Second Legendary. Very interesting. Good stuff. Shadow Bandit Wren. At the end of each turn, deploy a 1-3 Hen Spouse. So that's a great card, actually. Especially for, I'd say, a Tigress deck. Keeps creatures on the board, and it reaches my, reaches my magic number of 3 health per creature. So very cool. Very cool card. Awesome art. Very funny picture. The fox in the hen house kind of thing. So very neat. Okay, Spillover, another new another new card. Um, this one's a good card. High cost, and I generally stay away from high cost, but this is a good one. Uh, spillover. So what it does is it does six damage. Let's say you attack a minion with uh, a, red, a red health of one. That means five damage will go somewhere else. And in this case, it says a random enemy character, which could also be the enemy hero. So if they have a, let's say, 1-1 one, one on the board, you attack that 1-1, one, one, five damage will go to the hero. Very interesting card. Kick off. We just told what that is. Um, restore two health to adjacent warriors and give them guard. That's pretty strong. That's a tiger specific card in common, but pretty strong card. Now this is interesting. We got the first foil card of the day. I love foil cards, and I like what Kung Fu Panda does. They make it whatever the rarity is of that foil. That's the foil um, hue they give it. In this case, a blue. A very nice card. Kick off game plus two plus two for each trick in play. And it's a monkey specific card. Now monkey has some interesting dynamics with tricks. Uh, which we'll get into. A trick is basically a card that you play. Much like a secret in Hearthstone if you played that. Where it activates on certain conditions. In other words it's played face down with a question mark over it. When certain conditions are met. A lot of times it's attacking your enemy hero. Or playing a warrior. Or attacking another warrior. It activates its ability. Hopefully we'll see a secret as we go. But this is a foil card. Very cool. Another blue card. For Tigress again. 
Uh, whenever an adjacent warrior deals strength damage, game we've seen this card before, so it's the same thing. Adjacent means next to. And some of this will pick up as we go. So I won't you know, be long winning on every card. I'm just trying to get through all the different ones, and hopefully by getting these packs, we'll get all of them. And there's the trick. See, see how that works? It just all flows together. So trick, when an enemy warrior attacks, that's any enemy warrior attacks, give a friendly warrior plus two, plus three. A very good card for Poe. It helps with that legendary we got earlier. If they attack you. Let's say they try to attack a minion, uh, let's say a 2-2, two, two, 2 health, 2 damage. And they try to attack with a 3 attack minion. Normally that would have killed that minion. In this case, that 2-2 two, two becomes a 4-4. Four, four. That 3 does not take the 4 out, and in turn that minion probably is lost. So it's a really good card, really good uh, trick. Another blue card. Whenever a friendly character is healed, draw a card. It's a very good card. You always want to get, you, you want to try to get card draw. You want cards in your hand because that gives you the ability to, to do stuff. You don't need cards in your hand, you can't really do anything. So drawing a card is good, a good for a control deck. To put a big health taunter up, let's say, keep him behind him, heal him, and then you get good card draw. This is a good card for um, Mantis. It KO all war respected by Poison. We talked about earlier a theme deck, and I happen to mention Poison. Well, this would go real well with a Poison deck because if you can spread the Poison, you KO everything. So it's a good combo card. And I heard another thing about what is a combo card. Combos mean cards that go well with there. So you have one card that would poison, another card then it would pay in, in conjunction with it or addition to that would then KO the poison. It's called a combo. One leads to the other. Uh, Furious, we talked about earlier, which means if it gets hit, it does something. In this case, this is one of my favorite abilities in the game, and I'm glad we got to them. This is also one of my favorite cards in the game. It's a common. It's all I had before today. Um... It gets plus one and Swift. Swift is very, very important and very unique to this game and probably one of the greatest abilities you could get, in my opinion. Swift means you can attack with it and then after you attack, also defend with it. So, tremendous. It'll attack as a 4-7 it goes to against the enemy warrior or hero and it will defend as a 5-6 because it gets plus one strength and it would lose two damage attacking the warrior. So it's a 4-7 attacker, 5-6 defender, all in one card, that's fantastic. Swift is very, very good. Mantis has some strategies built around Swift, which when I get into my Mantis strategy deck, I'll go more into detail with that. This is a great uh, Chen card. Uh, poison. So we have a poison theme. You see where I'm going. You, as you start opening cards, you start saying, oh, I'm going to build a poison deck, and I probably will with these cards. This is a Shen card. Poison also applies poison to adjacent warriors, which means it gives the ability for warriors next to have the ability to poison as well. This is a great card early game. Two cost, two, three, high health. Kickoff means when it comes into play, this is what happens. Deals two damage to an enemy guard, warrior with guard. If the warrior does not have guard, it will not do anything to it. It has to have guard for this kickoff to be activated. Golden Goose, we talked about this before. We like Golden Geese, apparently. Tigress again, we had this before. Restores adjacent warriors. You'll see adjacent a lot, so keep that in mind. Adjacent is important. And here's another trick, a mantis trick. Uh, retaliation trick. When a friendly warrior is attacked, give it plus four strength and guard. Again, great card. It can really turn the tide if you're getting attacked. Keep on going. Uh, Siege Smith, meditate. Again, when it comes into play, it waits. Whenever you play a scroll, deal two damage randomly split between all warriors. It means it will hit two damage randomly, even warriors in cloak, which we talked about earlier. Tiny Taoist, plus one strength while another warrior is in guard. So sometimes it won't have a, a ward like kickoff or meditate, but it will give you a text. In this case, a guard is at the end, and it says this will get plus one strength when another minion on the board already that you control is in guard. Or another warrior in general, not just you control. Mudslinger, here's one. Farewell, which means when it goes away, blind a random enemy warrior. What that means is that enemy warrior will have a purple little circle around it. And you can choose where to attack, but a 50-50 chance it will attack, attack something else. So, for example, if you are, let's say, a 2-2, like I said, and you want to attack a 1-1, one, one, and that's where you attack to, but it's blinded, and there's a 4-4 four, four next to it, there's a 50-50 chance it will attack that 4-4, four, four, which will, will destroy the card. So blind is a way of um, making enemies attack different than where they want, which could be fatal in some cases for that enemy. Here's another one, a blue card for Viper. 
Uh, gain control of any war with three or strength or less this turn. This is a great card. This card allows you to take control of an enemy at three or less and then attack their master with it, which thereby would probably destroy the card and deal damage to that master. Great card with Viper. Viper has a lot of cool synergies with uh, taking cards that your opponent has and using them against them. I uh, want to build a Viper deck. Hopefully I'll get some more cards. I'll build them. The Contortionist, a Poe card. Whenever a character health is restored, gain plus one strength. So if you build a Poe deck with a lot of healing, which it already has, this character could get buffs off that. And a buff means uh, a, a, a beneficial effect or a, or a better effect adding to it. Keep on going. Another blue card. Mass Hysteria. Blackout All Warriors. Another cool term. Blackout means that all their abilities or techs that are on the cards become nothing. So it just mutes all their all the cool abilities they may have. Nothing. And you draw a card from the armory. Very awesome card. Very, very powerful for Viper. Now this one, kick off, gain two strength. If your opponent has an equipped warrior. An equipped warrior means that that warrior has equipment that they get from the armory and put on it. Kick off, destroy a random enemy trick. Kick off on activation, trick something secret. This would be very good if trick decks become something uh, popular. Farewell. Talked about this before. Snappy Soldier. Kick off. Remove one strength from an equipped enemy warrior. One strength in this case being that blue number. So remove one strength from that. One attack. One down. Gorging Gorilla. After each attack, gain plus one strength. So there it is. After it attacks each time, it, gain, it gets stronger as it goes. Proficiency, a trick. It, when your opponent plays a warrior, deal two damage to it and poison it. Farewell, draw a card. Again, draw a card is really good. It hits for three. A pretty solid card. Not quite health. I would want, if you're trying to build a card draw theme like we talked about with poison, this, this would fit right in there. Trick, pantsing time, monkey. When an enemy warrior attacks your master, cancel attack and stun it. See how powerful that is. Let's say it attacks with a 6-6. Six, six. All of a sudden, that 6-6 six, six becomes that attack is done. That 6-6 six, six is stunned, which means you can attack it all you want and it can't attack back. Very powerful card, especially late game. Late game means towards the end of the game as opposed to at the beginning of the game. Another foil card, Befuddle, Poison an Enemy Warrior. If it was already affected with Poison, KO it. Again, Poison deck. Seems to be a good theme. There we go. Snappy Soldier again, kick off, remove one strength, which is the blue. Can't be unequipped. So farewell, give your equipment to another friendly warrior. So that's interesting. I have not seen that one. Um, that's a monkey card. So let's say you put a good equipment on it. If they have a card like this last one, uh, where in the previous deck where it says remove an enemy equipment, it won't remove it from this one because it can't be unequipped. And it will pass that equipment on to the next one should it, uh, its health reach zero. Spillover, like I talked about earlier. Whatever you attack, any damage in blue that's higher than the card's red number, that damage goes to a random enemy warrior. Adjacent warriors get plus one strength. Kickoff. Farewell. When it goes away. Leap. Jumps over a defending card. Can't be equipped. That means it can't be equipped. <laughs> you can't put equipment on it. Uh, I'm trying to broke the code on that one for you. Panda Poser, another poke card. Your master is immune this turn. It's a good one. Kick off. You play him, your master can't take damage. So you can attack with Poe in this case, and he will not receive any of that damage back on him. Very good card if you're trying to hit a put a lot of pump ups into Poe. Um, another poke card. Farewell, destroy two one three mega lambs. A uh, good you say well two one threes, that's not very good. Three health is good. You can set them both to guard when they come out, and it gives you a little more defense. Meditate and dodge. Meditate he won't come in, do anything on the turn he comes out. Dodge, if you try to attack him, he's a 50-50 chance of evading that attack. Uh, whenever a friendly warrior with swift attacks, deal two damage to a random enemy character. Mantis has a great theme deck that I'm trying to build currently around swift. This is an addition to that. This will give you more reason to play Swift, which is why the theme would be so effective. The more things you have that interact with that theme, the better the deck is going to be. Trick. When your opponent plays an equipment card, unequip it and destroy all the equipment. That's pretty nasty if you're, if you're going against a, a deck that's trying to build a lot of equipment. It'll destroy all of it. Wind of Foolishness. Blackout an enemy of 5 strength or less. That's what we talk about. Blackout. 
it has no stats. So there's a good card for Mantis, for example, it's called Sugar Tooth, that will, if it's blacked out, it really limits that deck build. I talked about themes earlier. If there's a card built around a theme, and you black out that card, that whole deck can kind of become a little clunky. Trick, this is a great one I use in my Shen deck. When an enemy warrior attacks your master, KO it. So you play that late game, a lot of times this is one of me many games which help me get the champion. They go ahead and they attack you with a 6-6, six, six, it just goes away. Poof. And so does their morale. Snack time. <laughs> this is a great card for Poe, which I was waiting to get. I hope I got it. Trick. When your master is attacked, restore 5 health to all friendly characters. And you remember there's some Poe cards that interact well with gaining health. This is this would be a crucial card to that theme of health in Poe. And I'll be doing a Poe themed uh, webcast soon. Nana, this card is special to me. Um, uh, my mom was known as Nana. This is a foil version of that card. So this is a very special moment for me. Interesting how this game, when I saw it, that game, it meant a lot to me. So I have another foil version of Nana, which is very neat. Befuddle, again, poison. It's already afflicted with poison. KO it, again, the poison theme deck rears its head. Hammer horns, we've already seen that. Pushback, finally. Okay, Pushback means that if you have an enemy with guard, this will hit that enemy and make it drop its guard. So if you're running a big burst, and burst means you do a lot of damage in one turn, but there's a 310 crab, which is very popular. You run this 3-3 into it, yes, this card goes away because it won't survive, but a 310 crab no longer has guard, and you can push all your damage through, which means you can shoot all your damage into the warrior's face. Kick off, draw a card from Army, we've already seen that one. Meditate and Cloak, we talked about that. Let's talk about that. Furious again. This is a, this is a very good card. I'm glad I got it. Four seven high health. When it gets hit, it adds three strength. So let's say you attack the enemy warrior with it. It's a four seven on one turn. The next turn, it's a seven five. Pretty strong. The contortionist. Whenever a character's health is restored, there we talked about that earlier. So you have that Poe card that restores health. Let's say you have four minions on the board in this one, and that card restores four health, or at least just four different characters. This card becomes a 7-5 because it will get 4 plus 1s for each character restored health in that way. Great card. Theme of health and Poe. We've seen that one. A gift of Mastery. Give a friendly warrior plus 2, plus 2 in dodge for Monkey. Uh, there's some good dodge cards in Monkey. I haven't really experimented with it to give you too much of a report on it, but I will be using it more now that I have these cards. Blind and enemy warrior. 50-50 chance of attacking the wrong target. And here we go, another legendary. This one is a very powerful legendary to come out at turn 5. Master Flying Rhino. Um, with He puts his he's swift, so he can attack and defend. Kick off, he equips his armor of legend. A great card. Um, pretty proud I got that one. So, very strong card. Blackout Enemy War, we talked about that. Deal one. Here we go, another poison theme. Deal 1 damage to all wars and poison them. So, Viper Poison makes kind of sense if you know, a snake does what a snake does. I mean, Poe has foods, Viper has poisons, so it makes sense. Uh, meditate and kick off, deal 4 damage to an equipped enemy warrior. Blackout, talk about that. Meditate, immune to range damage. This would be very good against a Shen deck, because I learned firsthand the other night. Kick off, gain plus 2 strength. If your opponent has an equipped warrior, pretty strong 1 3, good health. Oh, and there's that elephant again. Keep on going. Meditate and dodge. Meditates and dodges. Um, kick off blackout enemy warrior. It's a high health. Pretty solid card. Push back. We talked about. Meditate kick off. Gain plus one plus one for each banana peel in play. Monkey has a theme around banana peels with some of his cards. And they're very strong. The banana peels will stun an enemy warrior if they're on them. So good theme deck around banana peels. When your point, we've seen this one. And we've seen the rest of these. And I know you're probably like, oh, this is long. So it's kind of to the 40 pack opening. And I'm really trying to cover everything, give you a good basic lesson on themes and Kung Fu Panda. And I'm really hoping you're still with me and it's still entertaining for you. Um, and we'll just see a lot of cards here the same now. Has plus two strength when you're, while your opponent has an equipped warrior. That's very strong. Five cost. Another legendary. And this is Shadow Bandit Ren. We had him earlier. 
So we have two copies of the same one, which brings me up to crafting. So I will probably disenchant him, which means break him down, and then craft additional cards off of him to maybe finish out one of these themes that I've been working on. I've seen probably a poison theme. Since I think I think the stream gods are trying to tell me to go ahead and make a poison theme deck for y'all on my next stream. So we'll work on that this week. Uh, this one, Wind of Wisdom, um, give a friendly minion leap block or push back. It's all the things we talked about. Leap, jump over guard, block, defend your warrior, push back, destroy guard. A good situational card. This is a great card again. Uh, you know, blackout all warriors draw a card from the armory. Poison all warriors with guard. We talked about that. We saw it earlier. Just some great poison thing. I'm probably trying to tell me something. I think. Um, Tor two health, gain strength. At the end of each turn, deal one damage to a random enemy warrior. That's, that's not bad. Hypnotized. And here we go. A uh, good Mantis card. At the end of your turn, if you have two more warriors in guard, gain plus two health. So, makes it hard to get rid of. This count is one of the two warriors, by the way, in guard. Well, finally, an epic. There's the purple band saying an epic. The unstoppable. Whenever a warrior gains guard, deal four damage to it. That's pretty good. So, if they try to put a guard, a warrior in guard, it'll hit four damage, which great against control decks. Spill over. One of my favorite cards. Nana. This is a good one. Card draw themes. Draw a card from your armory. Draw a card from your deck. That card costs two less. We're halfway done. Uh, a, a good scroll for tigers. Deals three damage, which in a lot of cases will, will finish off most creatures. And then if KO'd, it means knocked out. Draw a card. Poison. Spill over. A good trick. When an enemy warrior sticks to strength or more attacks, return to your opponent's hand. So it's almost like a uh, repulse for magic days. Um, you're just pushing them, you're just making them lose their turn, really. Tricks are really good. Spill over. Meditate and kick off. This is one of my favorite cards as well, Barrel Launcher. Uh, I always think of the Hobbit movie, Barrel Rider. But anyway, Meditate doesn't do anything but kick off. Does three damage to enemy warrior, which is in many cases lethal to most warriors. There it is again. This is great. This is a great one. If you're trying to run what used to be called, in another word is token decks. Or smaller creatures that offshoot from, from bigger creatures or from scrolls. In this case, Furious, this 3-7 hits something. It'll deploy a 2-2 two, two pet or token. Good card. Leap jumps over guard. guard. Kick off on play. This does this. The next trick you cost play costs two less, which means it's zero because all tricks cost two at this point in time of the game. A blue card, give leap to a warrior with four strength or less. Pretty nice uh, card. Golden Goose, kind of few of those. Okay. Meditate Dodge. Meditate Kickoff, Banana Peels with Monkey. When this warrior is attacked, it gains leap. That's pretty nice because a lot of times the equipment gives you damage and health bonuses. So this could be a really good early card to jump and hit the enemy warrior. Meditate and Tackle. Tackle we had not covered, so I'm glad we got this one. Tackle means that when this warrior attacks, only when it attacks, it does not receive any damage. So if it were to be attacked, it receives damage as usual. So if you see us on board, you want to clear it when you have your turn, because otherwise it'll just keep on hitting you with no negative effects to it. So Tackle is a very strong uh, card. Trick. Butterfingers. It can't be equipped. Talk about this one. Blind a Warrior. And the Shooting Stars. And really, they did a great job with this game. They really did. The art is fantastic. The themes are fantastic. Um, I'm really glad we found my family and I found this game. Your Equipped Warriors gain plus two health and kickoff. Uh, tri draw a card from the armory and blackout. Armor piercer, talk about that. Kick off, destroy enemy equipment. Unless it was that crab we found earlier, in which case it would not destroy that enemy equipment. Immune to range. Swift, great card. Can attack and defend on the same turn. Very powerful. Butterfingers, can't be equipped. 
this guy can't guard. So you're probably thinking, what is his purpose? He doesn't do any damage, can't guard. He's zero cost, so if you have a deck that does a lot of burst with like Tigress's ultimate ability, you can throw out him and just do you know some damage with him. So he's a combo piece. Meditate and dodge. Golden Goose again. And and uh, then you turn gains plus two health. That's pretty good in control decks. Unequip a random warrior. I love this card. I love bunny decks. This is a good one. It, after it goes away, it does a 1-3 good for defense. That's one of my favorite cards. This is, in my opinion, the best two-cost opening that I had uh, in, my, in my bunny deck. does three damage split between all enemy warriors. So, if a lot of times they'll play a gold tooth on turn three, it'll hit the 3-5. When it hits your warriors, a 3-3. This card will do a three damage right to it because it's the only warrior in play, and it will get rid of it. You can put it in defense and it has a high health value for a two cost card. I love that card. I'm glad I got it. An epic card. King of Thieves. When attacking, steal random equipment first and then deal damage. That's pretty good. So you run this equipment deck, you take it, and then you deal damage. So pretty nice little card there. Battle Bleeder. Whenever a warrior has successful dodge, gain plus two strength. What can we use that in? A dodge deck themed. It gets some benefits off of that build. Nice attack stun. Meditate and cloak. Just great art there. Really just great art there. Uh, this is a good one. I like this little card. 2-3. Good health pool. And gives somebody plus one health. For survivability. Uh, golden Goose. <laughs> I, I, I gotta put Golden Goose apparently. Draw a card for each equipped warrior in Shen. Good card to have. Your warriors with swift gain plus two strength. That's really good. And equipped gains leap. Try to see a lot of the same cards, especially Golden Goose. Meditate and push back. Meditate on turn, but then when it attacks, it will destroy guard. You see that one? Deal one damage to poison. Draw a card for each equipped friendly warrior. It's really good. Uh, Shen has a card later on. He gets when you get to a higher level that you unlock that that, he, that card comes into play and will equip all your minions with. Uh, will equip all your Warriors with weapons, this card will then, you'll be able to draw a card for each one. So that's pretty strong. Combo. Draw a card opponent's deck, plays with a banana peel. There we go with the monkey banana peel theme. You take a card from your opponent, it could be a great card, it could be a legendary, and they'll get a one, they'll get a banana. I won't be too happy with that. There's the elephant again. Good card. So you can build a theme on banana peel so far. Draw cards, health, poisons. The game's phenomenal. Blackout too, for that matter. Like two straight blackout cards. Build a blackout deck. Uh, and and uh, a lot of cards have that mechanic. It's called silence in some places. Uh, so there's poison. This is a card I really decided to get. I'm glad I got it. The allergist. Whenever this warrior takes damage, gain plus two strength. So every time he gets hit, he gets plus two. And if you have a deck that heals, he just keeps on getting stronger. Meditate and dodge. Meditate kickoff, meditate, meditate pushback, and there's the philosopher that gains a banana peel theme. Whenever friendly warrior health goes below one, set it to one instead, so you can attack and not worry about it uh, dying on that turn. Uh, that's good, I got a full version of one of my favorite cards. There's Nana again, can't guard, and then give leap. Getting close to the end here, guys. Thank you for staying with me. I hope you've learned a little something and got excited about this art and this game. Um, deal five damage to your master and then give it plus five strength and tackle this turn. So that's really you're just you're just going for it. You're 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 all in. You're going for one big kill and blow on something, and you won't take any more damage. So you're going to take five, but you're dealing seven. So you're you're going for it. Um, seeing these. Oh, an epic foil. They're very nice. Meditate. All equipped warriors get minus two, minus two. So if they go with an equipment. You go anti-equipment deck. This would be a cornerstone of that deck. And pretty good stats. Five, five, five. Super Swordsman. Armor Piercer. Okay. So we've seen those cards. Good card. 
All solid cards. Two winged assassins. We really like those cards. Though. Meditate. Start your turn. Gain plus two strength. Very strong. So if she's not handled right away, she's a four eight. When you can play her next, she'll at least be a six eight. And yeah, Butterfingers can't be a quick. Last card attack. It's been a great opening. Got a lot of good legendaries. Immune to damage. Game plus one health. So, really good on the packs. So, I'd like to, real quick to, to, to summarize this, and talk about some different things. I'm talk about aggro, very very fast paced attacking, control, you play a lot of defense, and high health, which we saw you're able to build themes around both those. Mid range means that you have not so fast, not so beefy, kind of in the middle, and you try to board control and try to win that way. Um, this game is great for competitive balance. It's great. It's great for family fun. Hope I've shown you a little bit about the game and some of the cards in the game. Hope you've learned a lot. This is the first. This is a glossary, a chance to learn different things. It's my pleasure to talk to y'all. And please like this and subscribe. And we're gonna have some content coming out to y'all very shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you very very much for being a part of this very first stream. And I hope y'all had a great time and learned a lot about Kung Fu Panda: Battle of Mastery. So this is.